Over the past two days, we've highlighted pollution concerns that residents have in two Kansas City, Kansas neighborhoods. Both Armordale and Argentine are bordered by rail lines, heavily traveled highways, and various industrial businesses. As experts have shared with us, this proximity to possible pollution often coincides with minority and low income communities, a term that's referred to as environmental racism. In part three of our series, Invisible Inequities, we're paying special attention to a study activists say highlights some of the issues there. Anchor Caitlin Canoe and web editor Lily O'Shea Baker recreated that study to better understand and amplify residents' apprehensions. We've got one right here. We've got one more flatbed. So where are we now compared to? We've got one more there. On a hot day in July, web editor Lily O'Shea Becker and I we'll have another one coming up here. Grabbed our lawn chairs and sat along the intersection of US 69 and Kansas Avenue. That location is just about a mile away from Amanda DeVries Sabia's home in KCK's Argentine neighborhood. I think there occasionally there are days where you'll walk outside and you can smell the diesel. That's just one of many complaints that prompted the environmental justice organization Clean Air Now or CAN to study this very intersection, all to highlight the potential for air pollution. In 2021, CAN spent two hours in the middle of the day counting diesel trucks. Their final tally came out to 415 trucks in two hours or an average of 3.46 trucks per minute. Got one right here. So we sat at the same intersection at the same time of day and then one on the ramp there, all to see if we could come up with the same results. So we have that one there, that one oh, there. Yep. One, two, three. Three. There's another then, one coming. Okay. Over the next couple hours, the count continued to climb. We have about 116 right now. 18 wheelers, big box trucks, and flatbeds. We counted them all. In the end, we've got at least like a cement mixer coming up that way. And there's one just now getting off. One, two, another one, three. three. Oh, we got two over there. Okay, four, five, and two, one, one okay. more. Okay. All right. So what do you have, 413? 413. Looking at our results and cans side by side, ours were incredibly close. We counted 413 diesel trucks in two hours or 3.44 diesel trucks per minute. But what does that really mean? Is that a lot? We took our findings to an environmental scientist who's also a doctor at Children's Mercy. So does the number of trucks sound like a lot? Yes, it does. It's not my experience. Do I know that 3.5 to 4 trucks per minute is a high enough dose of air pollution to affect somebody's health right there? Not necessarily. However, Dr. Friedman says when you look at the bigger picture of these neighborhoods, adding up the truck traffic, the nearby rail yards, and the industrial corridor, that ups the ante. So then the question becomes, is that a high enough dose? Absolutely. We know that residing close to highly industrial areas and a lot of highways and byways are correlated with greater asthma risk and exacerbation. <laughs> For Doris Sabia, her family, and others living nearby, these are risks they'd like to see addressed. What do you want to do next? I personally have adult onset asthma, which has progressively gotten worse over the last few years. And obviously, my son, um, I definitely have concerns about, um, you know, those long-term effects for him. Long before we conducted our study, CAN shared its findings and a list of recommendations with local, state, and federal entities. Those include creating specific truck routes to avoid residential areas, requiring zero emission trucks, and prohibiting idling in these neighborhoods, working towards zero emission facilities in Armordale, and switching to electric vehicles for trucks, forklifts, etc., at new and existing warehouses. So the EPA tells us when it comes to this list, it's limited to what it can do. Instead, it points to other local government entities. 
Wyandotte County didn't directly address CAN's list, but did tell us in a statement they maintain an air quality monitoring site in the county that provides 24-7 data on pollutants. KDHE told us while it does not have the authority to alter traffic routes to avoid residential areas, it says it has worked with businesses and schools in the county to try to reduce diesel emissions. The state health department also says it passed what's known as the idle reduction rule that went into effect in 2010. So we did reach out to the Kansas City, Kansas mayor's office a couple times, but never heard back. Meanwhile, for people who live in these nearby neighborhoods, they tell us they're not giving up on their push to eliminate pollution in Argentine and Armordale. If you would like to see parts one and two of this series and to read web editor Lily O'Shea Becker's in-depth reporting on this topic, please go to our website, kshb.com.